Looking to the future, I think probably in, in the short term, in maybe two years, there will be significant changes within the university in how we use data um, and how we use digital technology. However, I think universities will still be recognisable as the same beasts that they currently are. Projecting that forward maybe 10 years, I think universities might be almost unrecognisable. Um, I suspect we would see the end of lectures, which are a very poor way of transmitting information. And I think we would see a lot less face-to-face -face engagement with students. Um, but also we would have a much greater understanding of what our students are doing, how they're engaging with learning materials. And I think we would have a much more iterative process around how we work with students and how students produce work and are assessed. Whether or not Colin's predictions come to pass is of course a matter for the future. But what is certain is that technology is changing the everyday practice of teaching. The sorts of things that are happening are enhanced ways of engaging with students using online learning, better ways of providing feedback, encouraging student interaction through peer-to-peer -peer learning. So let's hear from some teachers about how they are using these and other practices in their classrooms today. So within my teaching now, um, I actually use things like the blog. Um, we, we do this through Moodle um, because it sort of creates a safer environment for the students because I am actually expecting them to answer um, questions that would actually stimulate quite um, diverse discussion. Um, and sometimes some of the, the questions that they ask them uh, can be a little bit sometimes emotive in subject. So this kind of helps the students to feel that they can share whatever their thoughts and feelings are about a particular subject within an environment where it is going to be safe, where it's not going to be going off into the ether somewhere. Um, and and they, can, they can feel a bit more free and open to talk about what they, what they think about the question I've asked. I found that it's worked really well. Um, the students actually gave me feedback um, about the blog saying that they, they felt that it kind of stimulated good discussion amongst themselves. And it also helped them see things from a different viewpoint from other students. Um, at the beginning of the course, I did sort of say to them that I didn't want them to hold back, you know, and that I did want them to really sort of explain what they, how they felt about certain subjects. And that did stimulate some really good discussions. Um, the students, as I say, did say that they felt that they kind of learned from each other. It meant that there was a lot of um, peer um, feedback going on as well, so and, and that kind of helped move the projects forward as, as we were moving, moving on through the module. This year we've kind of moved to a completely online portfolio, so 25% of their assessment for teachers was uh, a printed portfolio, but we were struggling to actually find uh, what were they actually doing. Uh, if, if a student didn't bring it in, we had no idea about their progress. So we've used Google Drive and Classroom to kind of interact with learners uh, uh, in regards to observations and all their kind of portfolio. So that, that's been a, a massive change for us and it's been a little bit of a, a learning curve because uh, one of the downsides to that is I've got a lot more work to do now because uh, I've got people commenting on observation forms which they weren't doing before. I've got people asking multiple questions. So I'm just having to kind of factor that in. But I think from a printing point of view, they don't have to print any paper. Uh, they don't have to spend time uh, creating a physical file. It's great for external examiners and uh, moderation because we can just share everything outside the organisation. I often make little video clips for students either to elucidate points in lectures that I feel it hasn't come across well or to present a different angle on something they found difficult or um, and generally to provide feedback on assignments and uh, increasingly to provide advanced information about coming lectures so students can watch the videos before the class and come in knowing the basic terms and able to engage better with the class that comes. I think it's improved student achievement because they are able to watch videos in their own time, to replay them, to go over something they find difficult. Um, and what I think is quite interesting is that they seem quite often to do it in groups. So they're getting the group dynamic as well um, People learn, very, people learn mathematics very effectively in groups and having something to discuss, I think, aids that group learning. 
Technology changes the dynamic of teaching. But this is a lot more than about just introducing more digital tools into the classroom. Exactly as we heard from students about the risk of technology overload, so teachers are conscious that there are far greater considerations than just finding the latest app to apply to a particular course. Teachers need to take into account the particular context of their students, where their students are drawn from, uh, what their students' preferences are likely to be. They need to take into account um, the subject matter that they're teaching. They need to think about how their subject area fits into broader professional practices. So let's hear from some teachers again about how they're taking into account these broader contexts. It's about making it simple, um, but also not just for the students, but for us. What I don't want to do is give myself another mountain of work to do to have to create things in the first place. What I want to do is be able to access something relatively simple, straightforwardly make it what it needs to be for me to utilise with the students and make it simple enough for them to pick it up pretty much straight away and be able to operate it. But something that will also give me what I need in terms of feedback as a teacher um, to let me know not only how the students are doing, but maybe feedback for me too to find out whether I'm covering the, the subject broadly enough. So I think we have to take into account the, the diversity of, of context. We have to be alert to different pedagogies. But I don't think that we should allow that necessarily to be an excuse or an opt-out. You know, perhaps in science or maths, uh, you, you will often hear people saying, yeah, but... You know, science is different, maths is different. You know, we need the traditional lecture because we've got so much information to get across. And I think that's worth challenging, actually. Um, getting people to think about what it is that their students are doing in a standard lecture with 100 people in it and what they're doing with their technology if, if it's not integral to the way that the lecture is being managed beyond PowerPoint and projection. And get them really thinking about how they could perhaps start to take control of the devices, exploit them and go further. And that's not even talking about the outside of the classroom uses and applications, where I think students are much more aware of the potential of what they've got in their hands, their pockets and their rucksacks. You know, it's just incredible. They're ac accessing the VLE via their mobile devices. They're 24 seven engaged. They see that, they appreciate that. For, for mature students that actually are, um, are, in, are asked to sort of uh, get involved with um, digital technology can feel a little bit apprehensive at first. It's just a matter of um, encouraging them, putting their minds at ease, maybe um, incorporating some extra training in, uh, within the module itself to kind of help those students um, feel that they can actually sort of meet those challenges. Once they kind of get their head around it, they're, they're, they're pretty good. Um, they, uh, it, does, it does bring another aspect to, to the learning to them and they, the feedback that I've had is yes at first I was really scared to do it but then afterwards I, I could see how, how it would benefit my learning.